fly. My name is Oscar Feliu. I'll be tying some saltwater flies. This specific fly is the tarpon fly. Tarpon flies in a traditional base, they have um, feathers that they, I pointed outward, so when you move the fly, they be able to oxalate. But the important part is what we use for a material called stas. And the fly will have a, a collar made of a stas, which will help to push water. In the area where we fish for tarpon, the water is discolored quite often, so the tarpon need to switch from hunting by sight to hunting by feel of the lateral line and the hearing. So therefore, by pushing water, we help the tarpon locate the lure. So here we are. For this particular fly, we'll be using a circle hook. As you know, circle hooks have the great property that you may not need to set the hook, actually allow the fish to turn after they take the fly, and the hook will roll because they are designed to do that and cut on the corner of the lip, which makes a perfect hookups. Now, we're gonna put some 3R thread in an orange color. This is gonna be a, what we call a cockroach. Then it's an old, old pattern that we have revised a little bit. And we'll use some flash, as we call them flashaboo, and that's going to become the center of the fly and every time those feathers move or breathe in the water, they will send the flash. It is not perhaps the most important feature, but it surely helps to for the fish to locate this fly. We're just gonna double it several times so we can get some more bulk out of it. And the exact size is not important because it's not an exact science. So, we attach it to the end, fold them over, there. And that's gonna be in between the two sets of feathers. Now we'll build a little ball of thread over that. That will help to separate the feathers. For feathers, we're using this um, saltwater hackle from Whiting in the grizzly dye tan and it's a very natural color many things the the stream in these waters like finger mullets and other things have this coloration so it helps a great deal now i'm going to measure this to be about the same length from the eye of a hook to the end of a flash and that's what we're where we're going to tie them Let's try to separate them in between, hold them in place, secure them with the thread before we cut them. So that's it. And we cut the rest of it, what we don't need. We'll separate those feathers a little bit more. Once you put them in place, you can wrap them quite tight and they will they hold their form. There. That's exactly what we want, right there. Sometimes the same kind of um, Weird that a fish as large as a um, tarpon will take a fly as small as this, but believe me, they will do that. Now we get a little flash of with more color to it, like this, um, like this green flash of and we we'll take about three strands. And we're going to we're going to add this three strand to either side of the of this feather again, with the intent that every time this feather breeds in the water, will send a flash. 
that's helping the tarpon find the fly. And keep them about the same length of the feathers, it will help a little bit. You give the, the flash a little bit more symmetry and it won't wrap around the hook. There. Okay, that's that. Now the next thing to do is use a guard. It's a usually a collar, and instead of winding hackle, we're going to use some what's called impala or kip tail. It's actually a calf tail, and we're going to use the brown of this calf tail to guard those those feathers, so they won't get wet and hold and roll around the hook. No, we don't want to do that. Okay. Now. You can also use bear hair, which is wonderful, especially from the paw of a bear, and that will definitely hold the feathers in, in, in shape. It's a little bulky, it helps to make push more water. We're just going to let them roll at this side a little bit, get it firmly. Then tip them over, cut another bunch of this. So we're going to put this in the other side and have total coverage of around the hook. So everything will be covered. So those feathers will stay right in place. That's exactly what I wanted right there. And if it doesn't work at first, you just move them with your hands until you get the desired shape. Okay, well, the next material we will add to it is called stas. And there's different type of stas. Try to choose the one that has the longer fibers because what we intend to do is add this stas not only for coloring and flash, but also because it's going to help us push that water, making the fly easier for the fish to find, which is a whole idea. So. As I'm doing this, I'm going to tape it also. This. Normally, type of flies, you don't tie the flies all the way to the eye of a hook. You leave a little bit of a room in there. At this time, we're going to tie them because it's a shorter shank, like most circle hooks have shorter shank. We're going to tie almost to the, to the eye. It won't hurt anything. Okay, now we're going to add this staffs. Made it nice and tight. Always push back the fibers. You may moist your fingers to do that. And then you're going to see a wonderful taper starting to shape. It's really a quick fly to tie. It doesn't take that much time to do this. Even when we're demonstrating right now with trick, it should be a a very short amount of time is spent at the vise with this fly. That's it, we give it about four or five wraps of that stash and finish it off. Got it. Let's take a look around this thing real quick, make sure we got everything in place, let's see. I think so. Okay, now we're gonna finish the fly. Put everything back again and if you have any fibers that are out of place that you want out, this is your time. You can wrap over them if you want to, or cut them. I chose to wrap over them. So I'm going to go all the way to the point right here and start again my taper. You got plenty of room. Thread is not expensive, so don't worry about how much thread you put in there. Just make it nice and even. And by putting back the materials and working real close, very little thread in between the nose of the bobbin and the hook itself 
the more distance you allow, the less control you have over the thread. So obviously, we want to keep it very close like this. And use your thumb to control the, the amount of thread you release. That really helps. Okay. Now all we need to do is we finish this thing. And epoxy or use some kind of um, resin that's going to um, harden and make this, these fibers very, very stiff because you need to have that to send the vibrations on the water. It's, this is really wonderful stuff. Okay, we're going to cut the thread. There. And except for the, the coating we're about to give it, the fly is pretty much finished. I'm going to put these fibers out. You may use a needle if you wish. This is good enough. I'm going to use something that's called fabric fusion. Now, it's a little bit softer than, than uh, epoxy, but it does a wonderful job and it covers very well. So let's see how this works. Just a bead. And just spread that bead around. Give it plenty of it. We want to get a nice coating on this fly. Then get into the fibers right here, see? You see, they have, they almost look like a bare hair day, but don't worry about it, That's, it'll do the job anyways. Okay. Now, except for, I'm going to get a needle just to be sure that I pick those fibers up and straight. Okay. Now we're going to put this on the drying wheel. And in about 10 to 15 minutes, it'll be dry and ready to go fishing. And that's what we call the Stas Color Fly.